Well, the interest in Hunter Biden and his laptop isn't for the tabloid gossip stories of his illicit lifestyle of sex and drug use. It's about questions surrounding how he, someone without qualifications other than being Joe Biden's son, was able to sit on boards of big foreign companies and get paid millions of dollars for it. What we want to know is, was he on these boards being paid that kind of money in exchange for access to his father or in exchange for some sort of deal or some benefit that his father could provide as vice president of the United States? That's what we want to know. And more importantly, if he was put in these powerful positions in exchange for access to his dad in some way, did his dad know about it and did he help him? With us now is former White House stenographer Mike McCormick, who says he overheard a conversation in 2014 between Joe Biden and another official that not only implicates Joe Biden as being aware of his son's dealings, but worse, he actually helped him. The very thing that we all feared and suspected. Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kim. It's great to be here. Okay, so this is um, a bombshell. This is something that would be uh, p potentially very disastrous if there's an actual investigation in it. First, tell us, what does a White House stenographer do? Well, I worked there from 2002 to 2018, and I worked with the press office. We had a stenographer's team, and our job was to make an official transcript of any time that there was uh, an interview or a speech or um, the Pro White House press briefing, the daily press briefing, all those interactions with the press had to be recorded and have an official transcript. All the, a lot of those transcripts were publicly um, available on the website. Not all of them were though. Some of them were uh, held back. Like if it was a one-on-one -on -one interview with say New Yorker magazine, they would just keep that at, in the background it's called um, non-public, you know, um, internal use. So on this, what we're talking about is I used to travel with Joe Biden. I worked with, for Joe Biden from 2011 to 2017 when he left. And I traveled with him to China, travel with him to Russia and travel with him to, to Ukraine. And I wrote a book about it in 2020, about three years ago, it came out right in the middle of the lockdowns. Joe Biden unauthorized in 2020 crack crack up the Democratic um, Party. And basically, I wrote it after having left the White House. And it was just sort of a surface view of what I saw that told me he was unpresidential, but it wasn't criminal. And then about a year and a half ago, uh, in September 2021, I got a hold of a copy of the Hunter Biden laptop from Marco Polo. Um, they're a nonprofit um, anti-corruption organization headed by Garrett Ziegler. And Garrett emailed me, he said, hey, you know a lot about Joe Biden, you should have this copy. And I said, great. So he just gave it to me. And I started writing a sub stack. And my sub stack is midnight in a laptop of good and evil. And what I did was I went back over the time that I knew where Joe was. And I looked at the email traffic that was going between Hunter and his business associates. And I started to put together a point to point restructuring of how much Joe assisted Hunter and his friends. And finally, about um, a month and a half ago, I got to the point where I had written a substack saying, I was on Air Force Two when Jake Sullivan came walking to the back. Now, I didn't witness him talk specifically to Joe Biden, but it was Joe Biden's Air Force Two plane. He was in control of the plane. Jake Sullivan was a spokesman coming back to express to the press, because I'm standing there with my recorder, what Joe Biden told him to say. And he started talking, and one of the reporters asked him, the energy assistance you're bringing is for what? He said, well, we're going to, several things, but two things jumped out. One was fracking. Fracking was Burisma's specialty. And at the time I listened to it, I didn't think anything Un unusual. This is just typical White House. We're going to save, you know, uh, help a, an afflicted country. At that time, they were being invaded by Russia and Crimea. So we were sort of riding to the rescue. It sounded all, all reasonable. But after having read through the sub, after having read through the laptop and produced these sub stacks, about a month and a half ago, I realized, hey, look, Jake Sullivan 
had, or I'm sorry, Joe Biden knew when he told Jake Sullivan to go back and talk to the press that his son was already on the board of Burisma. Hunter joined the board of Burisma three days before this flight. And there were emails and uh, calendar events in the laptop that told me that Hunter was meeting with his dad in the White House two days before he joined the board of Burisma with a business partner who also joined the board of Burisma. And they got on the plane and then Joe got on the plane and brought all this um, American assistance over to Ukraine. Well, that's enriching his family member with American assistance. That's malfeasance. That's public corruption. That's what the FBI should be investigating. So I went to the FBI and I said, hey, look, I have evidence. I know the guy who said this in the transcript that I produced. He's he's identified only as a senior administration official. Jake Sullivan at the time was the uh, vice presidential's national security advisor. Now he's in the White House as the president's national security advisor. Same two people, different higher level job. But back then he was doing the same job and he was doing speaking to the press anonymously. Well, I said, wait a minute, I know who he was. I'm the witness. So his name is Jake Sullivan. He's breaking the law. He's part of this conspiracy. That's what happened. Okay, so walk us through the timeline. So essentially what you were able to do was connect the dots once you finally got the laptop. Because as you were saying, when you were there as a sonographer on Air Force Two, you didn't think anything of this conversation. It just it seemed like another day uh, following the vice president around. But when you exactly. take... When you take into context, then, the background of what was going on, now what we've learned through Hunter Biden's verified laptop, now you're saying that, wait a minute, then you can you can see that this conversation about Burisma and frack, or about fracking, so they didn't say the word Burisma specifically, right? You're, that's Correct. just implied. Yeah, they wouldn't do that. But Jake Sullivan referred to non-conventional gas resources. That's fracking. Okay. Or un unconventional gas resources. That's fracking. And it's and that in was the White Burisma's House transcript. Business. Okay. And that's Burisma's specialty. That's right. And then do we have, okay, so, so just trying to understand this. So the laptop then shows that there were certain conversations or meetings that were exchanges, emails that were ex exchanged, meetings that were had between Hunter and his dad, and and this and the fact that Hunter then was put on the board of Burisma, and this was all happening, and then this conversation happens on Air Force Two, so uh, and that's that's the then it then it starts to look really suspicious. Like, why did this conversation on Air Force Two happen when at the same time simultaneously Hunter's joining the board of Burisma, and now they're basically getting a kickback, which is what we all kind of what well, this is what we've all suspected and what we've all wanted to know was. How, why did Hunter get appointed to be on the board of Burisma, somebody who has nothing to do with energy uh, or Ukraine or any, or, or any qualifications in that regard at all? And the suspicion is he was put on there for access to his dad. He was put on there for some sort of maybe, you know, talking his dad into special deals or treatment or whatever that might be, access in some way to his father. And what you're saying is that this timeline all now connects. So another piece of that then would be, do we have any public record of Burisma getting any sort of special deal from the U.S. government after that conversation on Air Force Two? Yes. So that's the other part of the of uh, so they they um, two answers to that. One, I'm a, I'm writing my Substack. I'll be publishing tomorrow uh, Wednesday about how as as a, also as part of that. Um, conversation when he's outlining, when Jake Sullivan is on the Air Force Two outlining to the press all these uh, elements of this assistance package. He also talks about, and we're going to be helping them with assistance to improve their energy efficiency. Well, there was a USAID program at the time called Municipal Energy Reform um, P MERP. It was M E R P um, product production or something, Municipal Energy Reform Program, sorry, program. So they put together this Merck program. They knew before they were going over there that Burisma was going to get a chunk of this. In September 2014, there's an email on a laptop where a 
Burisma executive named Vadim Pazarsky is like, thank you guys. And he's referring to Hunter Biden and, a, and like a government lobbying crew that he put together. Thank you guys. We got our grant from, Bur from uh, the, the Merck grant from USAID. They knew before they went over, they were going to do this. They did it and they just laundered this money through the USAID grant. Joe Biden, it, Hunter wasn't put on the board by Burisma. He was put on the board by Joe Biden. Joe Biden knew one of the top board members, a guy named Alexander Kwasniewski. He was the ex-Poland -Pol president, ex-president of Poland. Joe and Kwasniewski were old friends from their days when uh, Poland was getting uh, led into NATO. Joe was the um, uh, chairman of the Foreign Relations Foreign um, Relations Board, Foreign Relations Committee in the Senate, and he worked very closely with Kwasniewski. Kwasniewski was on the Burisma board in January. Before anything happened in Ukraine, he was involved with Ukrainian uh, energy assistance. This stuff, this whole program with Hunter and Joe getting money out of Burisma was put in place between February. There was a stopover that Joe did in March in Poland, and I believe he had contact with uh, Kwasniewski around that. Shortly after that, Hunter goes to Lake Como, Italy, and has contact with the Burisma executive there. In early April, there was a meeting in Joe's, in Joe's um, Naval Observatory with Hunter and the Joe's vice president team. This is shortly after he comes back from Lake Como. I think that's a strategy meeting for him to hook up with Burisma. A week later, Hunter goes into the White House with a fellow Burisma board member named Devin Archer. There's photos that have been widely published of Devin Archer and his son on this day, April 16th, 2014, in the White House with Joe Biden. Hunter's not pictured, but there are emails and there are calendar entries by Hunter saying, I want to go with you to the White House. I'll meet you at the gate at 1115. Meet you and Luke at the gate at 1115. So all this was put in place for a long time. It, it resulted in uh, a lot of money was spent through American assistance to improve um, the fracking industry in Ukraine, which directly benefited Burisma. And then there's this MERP grant, M-E-R-P grant, and that uh, just put money in their pocket. So you're saying that Joe Biden put Hunter on in order to get money out of Burisma, not that Burisma put Hunter on the board in order to get favors from the U.S. government. Yeah, it's kind of probably a little bit of both. But yeah, it was a deal that Joe cut, but he did it. He, I mean, Hunter didn't go out there and recruit himself into it. Joe got him in there. Do you think that Joe did it not because he was trying to get money personally, any sort of kickback for himself? but that he was trying to help, I mean, it still would be wrong, but he's trying to help his son who obviously has a lot of problems. Well, that's still a crime, but I think Joe did benefit uh, financially, just not directly. And um, there's more to come out about it. Um, there's some different aspects about how, where Joe Biden went. So Hunter Biden gets, Joe goes on this plane in, on April 21st, 2014. They go into Ukraine. Two weeks, about three weeks later, Hunter is uh, officially recognized as being on the board. There's a Burisma press release. There's a bunch of questions in the White House about it. And about a week after that, Joe Biden goes to Cyprus. Cyprus is the banking center for Burisma. They're registered there in Cyprus. It's the money laundering capital of the oligarchs of Ukraine and Russia. And that's mm -hmm. where Cyprus was. And that's where Joe Biden went. So the first time an American vice president went to Cyprus in 23 years, the last time was Lyndon Johnson. And or maybe even more, it was like 40 years. 1963 was the last time an American vice president went there. No one goes to Cyprus. And all of a sudden, Joe Biden goes to Cyprus. No press on the trip. I wasn't on that trip. And he, he had a longstanding sort of um, discussion with Turkey and Greece about trying to resolve the crisis in Cyprus. Cyprus is kind of like a split in half um, island in the uh, Aegean Sea, and half of it is claimed by Greece and half is Turkey. Well, it's also become the money laundering capital of the world. 
So Joe Biden goes there and supposedly tells everybody, I'm here to fix the problem with Cyprus for Greece and Turkey. But he's also there with Burisma's headquarters uh, mm -hmm. and their banking is right there. So in, in other interviews, you've implicated Jake Sullivan um, and said that he is complicit in this. But is it possible that Jake didn't know about Hunter being on the board and, uh, you know, the connect, the family connection and these other personal connections with with uh, Joe Biden and Burisma? Is it possible that he was just like, oh, yeah, we're going to do this thing for a Ukrainian company and like we do for many Ukrainian companies? No. Jake Sullivan was, uh, he started with Joe Biden uh, the year before this. He, he was with him for about a year and a half. He went to Cyprus with Joe. He went to Poland with Joe. He knew what was coming down. And he just walked back and tried to sort of nonchalantly, you know, disguise the fact that they were talking about fracking when it was, you know, fracking. And, you know, so there's more about Obama in this. So Barack Obama on April 16th, remember I told you that's the day that Hunter and Devin Archer go into the White House. That night, um, Barack Obama had Joe Biden in the back of his limousine in Western Pennsylvania. They did an event together. They flew two planes to the Pittsburgh airport. They wound up driving from the event back to their two planes and then each got on their own plane. But they had this long, very secure meeting in the back of the limousine that night. And that would, to me, tell me that Obama knew. That day also started with, I put this in my book, Joe Biden Unauthorized. Um, that day also started with a very strange meeting between Joe Biden and David Axelrod, senior advisor to Barack Obama. Axelrod was slated to go have breakfast with Joe Biden in his Naval Observatory residence. David Axelrod does not like Joe Biden. Joe Biden does not like David Axelrod. They pretend they do, they don't. There's a lot of animosity there. And I, I don't think David Axelrod ever got up that early in the morning to go talk to Joe Biden unless he was told to by Barack Obama. So I'm not sure exactly what happened there. And this is why it has to be investigated. And I said to one of the statements I've made that's gotten a lot of uh, publicity lately is, I should be in the grand jury telling them what I know because a grand jury is an investigative tool. They can call in Barack Obama. They can call in David Axelrod as witnesses and ask them in front of the grand jury and get answers. What were you talking to with Joe Biden in the morning? What were you talking with Joe Biden as you were riding around in a limousine? Did you know about Burisma? All these questions. Yeah, and so what's happened since you've gone to the FBI? So I haven't heard back from the FBI. I haven't heard back from uh, the there's a um, David Weiss is the U.S. attorney investigating uh, the Biden family corruption up in uh, Wilmington. And they, he's been doing that with the FBI for over three years. And there's next to nothing about it. There's, you know, they're talking about it being a tax problem. It's a lot more than a tax problem. And I should be in front of that grand jury talking to him. Haven't heard back. I may be writing up an affidavit to present to that rent to uh, David Weiss and say, hey, look, here's a signed affidavit. Here's a sworn affidavit. I saw, I witnessed these events and I should be in front of your grand jury to uh, tell them what I know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, certainly it needs to be investigated. Um, that is something that I think a lot of the American people want to see, you know, whether people have supported Joe Biden or not, or whether they come from the left or the right, you know, people want to make sure that the government is operating the way the government should. And I suspect that Joe Biden is not the only one, um, if this is the case with Hunter. I, I suspect there's a lot of this going on. And the reason why you're not getting any callbacks, the reason why there is, really isn't any investigation in this is because it would, I, I then we'd have to start looking at a lot more people and they don't want that to happen. I think on both sides of the aisle, we see that there's a lot of these sort of backroom dealings where it's, okay, my family member can get on this board or, or you know we insider you know we see things of like insider trading we think just a lot of abuse of this power and knowledge that these government officials have but this is certainly you know we're talking now about the current president of the united states so that's obviously um uh very grave that we you know we need to actually look into this so mike thank you for coming forward with this there's no other way to say it he's a criminal well and that should be investigated uh for sure so 
Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for uh, for telling us about this. So where uh, you're going to be releasing more information, you said, on your Substack. How do people find your Substack? What is it called? Right. My Substack is Midnight in a Laptop of Good and Evil. Okay. And you can subscribe uh, free or you can pony up and give me a, a subscription for, with a paid subscription. Those are always appreciated. You get a copy of my book if you do a, a paid subscription. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for having me. Well, many of you know I've been talking about a new product that I've been using called Field of Greens, which is a great way to get all of your fruits and, and vegetables into your diet, all of those daily fruits and vegetables we're supposed to be eating. Well, now Brickhouse has a new product that I've been trying lately called Lean, and I bet you can guess what this is for, right? Uh, Lean helps control hunger cravings and helps your body dispose of excess sugars to better maintain a fat-based metabolism and to keep you motivated to continue along your weight loss and health journey to get leaner and healthier. Now, I've been taking it, and I have to admit, I was really hesitant at first because I get really jittery when I try these types of products, and so I don't like them, I stop taking them. But I am happy to say Lean does not give me any sort of jitters or any sort of negative feelings at all. Um, I, I don't know how well it's working yet because I just started it about a week ago. But the ingredients are definitely different from ingredients I've seen on other similar products. Um, again, I can't compare it exactly to other products because honestly, I stopped taking the other ones because they give me the jitters so badly or other strange side effects. And so I, I don't take any types of pills like that. But I have been taking this and I am really happy with it. It doesn't give me any of those negative feelings or those jitters. So I'm, I'm still taking it and we'll see what it does. Um, if you want to get it and try it out for yourself, head to fieldofgreens.com and use the promo code KIM to get 15% off of your first order. Whether you want to get lean and, and take this new product that they have, or if you want to get the, uh, the Field of Greens and get your daily fruits and vegetables into your diet, which again, I love that product. I drink the lemon lime, tastes like iced tea, green tea, like iced green tea with lemon. I like that one a lot. So either way, whichever products you want to get, just go to fieldofgreens.com and use the promo code KIM to get 15% off your first order.